So last summer, I was facing a crisis of confidence when it came to my skills as a farmer and my ability to run this farm. Good morning, weird chickens. You see, on my project to-do list for 2022, I wanted to fence in additional area of pasture on our farm so that we would have more land readily available for our cattle to graze. You see, in 2021, we added cattle to the farm and I had this grand scheme of taking about 24 acres that were up on the upper pasture of our farm farm that were completely unfenced and had been more or less untouched since we purchased the farm and I would put a perimeter fence in then I would be able to run my cattle up there without having any sort of problems or worry about them escaping and wandering the greater Peachum area. We already got two eggs this morning and so I ordered the necessary equipment and I ordered the necessary materials and I essentially got myself ready with a plan for fencing in that pasture and in the summer of 2022 I started the work to put in the pasture fence. Good morning, large white farm dogs. How are you guys? You know, we have this big, beautiful fence here in the lower pasture where the bird yard is. And while I did some help to construct this fence, I really didn't build it myself. I hired my friend Ron to build it for me. And it's really well done. It's attractive. It's effective. It truly is everything you could ask for in a fence. Hey, you two, stop eating the Macho Man fur. No, hey, yes, don't eat Macho Man fur. Every day when I brush out Macho Man, I usually get these clumps of fur and I just left it on the ground yesterday and the dogs are trying to eat it. Now, as it came to fencing in my property, I had a lot of different options that I could go with. You know, I could go with like a more traditional cedar post fence like this, where you basically take these wooden fence posts and you pound them into the ground. You know, these types of fence posts are super, super sturdy, but they're also very expensive and they take a lot of work to install. And Given the fact that this fence is only designed to really keep my cattle in, as well as maybe potentially sheep if I ever get them, as well as maybe potentially my dog and other things like that, I didn't necessarily need to go with a woven wire fence like the one you see behind me here. And so a fence post like that might have been a little bit of an overkill. Plus the downside of a fence like that is you then have this situation where you need to figure out insulation and protection, and it just might not be worth the effort of doing something like that. The other option I had was I could install something like a T-post here. T-posts are essentially steel posts that are painted. They're really easy to push into the ground. They're also actually pretty easy to pull up if you need to pull them up with, if you have a special T-post puller. And while I like T-posts just fine for temporary fences or semi-temporary fences, like the fence that you see behind me here is designed to be set for a couple of years and then maybe I'll move it or change it up. The fence that I was planning for for the upper pasture was very much intended to be for very long-term use because I knew that that was always gonna be the perimeter of our pasture. And so I wanted something a little bit more permanent Plus, when it comes to these steel posts, you got to do a lot of insulation work because this fence that I had, because I was using it to contain cattle, I wanted to make sure it was also electrified. So that's where my ranching hero, a guy by the name of Greg Judy, introduced me to these things that you see right here in my hand. This is what's known as a timeless fence post. It's actually a rigid PVC material made from recycled vinyl windows. And then they put this special UV coating on it so that it doesn't break down in the sunlight too quickly. What they do is they take the old vinyl windows, they grind them up, and then they basically remold them into this shape. And so it's such a great example of taking a waste product that we have all around us in society and turning it into something, again, that would be useful. But the other advantage of a material like this is the fact that it's self-insulating. And so with like a wooden fence post like this, because wood would conduct electricity and it would essentially ground out my fence and sap it of all of its power, I need to use things like these plastic insulators here to keep it from touching the wood at all times. But with a material like the timeless fence post, I can actually just touch it right to this electric fence. And so even though there's like a one joule charge and it's like 10,000 kilowatts are running through here. I don't feel anything and it's totally fine. As you guys can see right here, the fence is actually on right now. And as I've learned from experience, it really hurts when you touch it. Ah! <laughs>
<laughs> and so these timeless fence posts have holes drilled every three inches or so. And so if I wanted to make a high tensile fence, which means I'm running tight wire through the fence, I can just run the wire right through here and easy peasy, I got myself an electric fence, which is exactly what I needed. Let's go check on the baby gooselings. Good morning, baby gooselings. How are you guys doing? How's it going this morning? Abby's actually becoming friends with the baby gooselings. I think they're a little bit terrified of Abby, but she means very well. Abby, please don't go in there. Abby, out. Good girl. But yeah, these guys are really healthy and they're getting so big and I haven't lost a single one. I have sold a few though, the other farm. I think I've sold about five now. I know three of them are just being used as farm geese. Uh, two of them are actually being introduced to chicken flocks as we speak. And so they're gonna serve as nice little additions as well. But yeah, these guys are getting really, really strong and really, really healthy. And very soon, probably the next three or four days, they're gonna have some brothers and sisters that I probably won't move in here with them, but they will be coming out here because I have another hatch coming. But first I gotta hook them up with some fresh water. There's some fresh water, guys. Pretty soon they're gonna have to move to the bigger drinkers. Let's give them some gooseling spaghetti. I got gooseling spaghetti for you guys, it's your favorite. I love watching them descend on the madness of grass. But anyway, I digress. So I really like this idea of using these recycled windows as a way to fence in my farm. And so I went online and ordered a couple of pallets of timeless fence posts, and I got ready to work in 2022. Morning, birds! Wow, it's so warm in here still. It's like about 40 degrees Fahrenheit outside, and I don't know, just by guess, it feels like it's 60 inside. Oh no, I forgot about putting the weird chicken eggs in my sweatshirt pocket, and now I think I have a pocket omelet. Ugh, that's no good. At least the other one's still intact. One of the occupational hazards sometimes, carrying eggs here on the farm. I go through a lot of laundry this time of year. Poor Toby just got chomped by that goose. Yeah, I know, buddy. We gotta be careful this time of year with geese, too. They're very aggressive. You know, when it came to 2022, I had really two big projects on my plate. One of them was building this giant hoop coop, which my buddy Alfred and I were able to successfully do by the time that it was the time to move the birds in. But the other project that I had on my work plan was to fence in that pasture. Good morning, girls. I can tell you're a little bit jealous and you want some food. I'll be right with you, don't worry. But back in July, I actually started the work to build the fence up on the top of the pasture. I started off by setting my corner posts. Timeless Fence Post also makes like an uh, H-brace kit as well as a corner post kit. And so I bought a couple of those and I installed those in first. Whenever you're building a big perimeter fence like that, it's important to start with your corners as well as any of the places where you have a significant bend and brace it first and so that was essentially the work I started to do in July and now again I bought those timeless fence post H brace kits I'm not sure if I actually would do that again if I had to do it over while I have absolutely loved the timeless fence posts themselves and I'm going to talk more about that in a couple minutes the H brace kits are a little bit expensive and I don't necessarily see the value relative to say just using T posts as corner posts or even putting in wood corner posts. So I would definitely say that the jury is still out on that one. But then once with all of my H's and corners in place, I started the process of lining up the fence. And what I would do is I would run some string between each of the H braces, and then that string would serve as the guideline. And then I started just putting in fence posts. And it really was in that stage of the project where I ran into a brick wall. You see the design for my pasture fence required 150 fence posts. And particularly for a guy who's never put in a lot of fence posts, that's an awful lot of fence posts. And so rather than starting myself off and building some skills on a small and attainable fencing project, I had made the unwise decision of trying to climb Mount Everest all by myself. You know, of my three major toxic traits, one of maybe my most toxic is the fact that my out... <laughs> Gotta be careful, it's always hot. For the most part, they're very smart about the fence, but every once in a while, they like feel like they have to test it. But as I was saying, my most toxic trait is often the fact that my ambition can outstrip my abilities. And when it came to this fencing project, that was very much the case. I had 150 fence posts to put in, and I was finding that it was hard physical work that I was not used to nor skilled at. And because of that fact, I really struggled. All right, girls, come on. I got some surprises for you. Let's go. Feeding time. It's feeding time. I know it's your favorite. You're always so excited for this. There you go. 
Dig in, girls. You don't have to go in the trough. You can just eat from the trough. It doesn't get in your bellies any quicker. You know that, right, girls? So yes, Artie, Little Polly, and Phil are all doing really well and growing up big and strong and piggly. Is piggly even a word? And so as the fencing work went slower than I would have liked, I ended up avoiding it more than I should have. Meaning it became one of those tasks that I actively avoided doing and only did when I had absolutely nothing else to do. Despite the fact that it was one of the two biggest projects I wanted to try to accomplish last year. And here it was hard physical work that I was not very good at and I was actively avoiding doing. And when you're running a farm by yourself, it's not like the things just magically will happen for you at some point you're just gonna have to grit your teeth and tackle it and yes there were certain efficiencies that I developed over the course of the summer like for example I built this little thingy here that helps me install the timeless fence posts and it actually also works for T posts as well you know because I was always alone I was finding that it was really hard to get up high enough for me to use the post driver and put in the posts and keep it level and straight or straight-ish. And so I was always struggling by using this little tool. I can actually just set it right in place and then I can get the key post driver handy and just drive it right in. It took me about 40 or so timeless fence post installs before I came up with that idea and it makes a massive difference. The other major revelation I had was that different post drivers can help you with different phases of the project. So as longtime viewers of our videos know, I'm a huge fan of this gas-powered T-post driver. What's really cool about it is, rather than having to ram down the post yourself, you just press a button and it's got like a little jackhammer inside of it. And then that jackhammer will pound the post down for you. So fencing posts like the one right here behind me, those were things I was able to just drop in almost instantly because I had the power of the T-Post driver. But when it came to these timeless fence, it was a little tricky because number one, they're kind of tall. And as you can tell, I'm kind of short. I mean, I'm about five foot nine and these are six foot posts. And to lift that T-Post driver, which is about 65 pounds up this high, get it on top of the post, make sure the post is straight and then drive it down is a lot of work. And surprisingly, the gas powered T-Post doesn't work as well in driving the first few initial strikes on these PVC timeless fence posts. But eventually what I figured out is if I just take this much lighter traditional hand powered T-Post driver and use that to bang in my first couple strikes just like that, what I figured out is that the timeless fence post would stay in place and then I could come back in later on and drive it in with the gas powered post. And so by using both T-post drivers, it was way easier and much more efficient and the ones that I did with that method of alternating between driving in by hand and then finishing off and driving into the point that you actually need to drive it all the way down to so that it doesn't move around too much, I was able to do it about three times as fast. Unfortunately, I learned that lesson probably about 80% into the project, and so it was almost a little too little too late. And by the time last fall was rolling around, I was so focused on completing the hoop coop that I pretty much just took the whole fencing project and put it on hold and pushed it off to 2023. I had plenty of grass for my cattle to graze just inside the permaculture orchard, and so I knew I had plenty of grass up until the winter time for my cattle down below and I could wait until 2023 to complete it. And so, you know, with my tail between my legs, I gave up on the project for the year and pushed it off to this year. So here it is. My entire fence is complete and in great shape and just ready to go. And after much trial and tribulation, I'm really excited to show it to you guys. So as you guys can see right here, this is my gate. I'm probably gonna still put a wheel on this gate because it's so big and heavy. And I ended up mounting it to a wooden post right here, but this will serve me really, really well. I imagine this will be a gate that I come through a lot on a regular basis. And then here you can see, these are our timeless fence posts in action. It's a five strand high tensile wire fence and the spacing might look a little bit weird, but it's intended to be functional. So I kept it off the very bottom rung cause I didn't see it doing much good. So there's this one rung here. This rung is not going to be electrified because it's gonna have so much grass up against it i don't want it to ground out too much but this second one which is one spacing between it so it's about six inches from the first one this will be the first electrified one then i'll electrify this one this one and this one as you can actually even see here i even did the connections between each of them so that they're all connected up and i was really debating running a wire from 
the electric fence that I have down here that actually connects down to the bird yard. That's what you see down below. But I was worried about having problems with the pigs or something grounding it out up here. And so I actually ended up getting just another solar energizer. This is a one joule energizer. So this will have plenty of juice for my cattle up here. And it's powering about, I don't know, almost three miles of high tensile wire. So between the four strands that I have electrified, if you think about how that runs around this thing, let's say four times, actually maybe it's about two miles, but regardless, it has plenty of juice ready to go. The one last thing I actually have to do is I have to put uh, grounding rods up here so that I can ground it out. But other than that, it's pretty much good to go. As you can see with these timeless fence posts, they're not actually super, super rigid. They can bend back and forth. That actually keeps them from breaking and keeps them to be real durable. But when you have the fence post coupled with the high tensile wire, it actually makes for a very sturdy barrier. And then as you throw the electricity into the mix as well, that gives you basically everything you need. And yes, I think it's pretty cool that our farm is being fenced in with recycled materials. You know, my intention is for this fence to be permanent, but these are actually pretty easy to pull out and remove too if you needed to. You could just use a standard T-post puller. But this fence I hope to have last about 20 years or so. These timeless fence posts have a 20 year warranty. Some people say you could probably get even more if you actually kept repainting the fence posts themselves because that will give you more time of uh, protection around the UV coating. But I feel like 20 years is just about the right amount of time for me to have cattle up here and then figure out what do I wanna do next. And so from a timing perspective, it just feels about right to me. And if you guys are curious, I'll leave an affiliate link down below. You can find your own timeless fence posts there. They're not cheap, but they're pretty comparable to the cost of a steel T-post. And so uh, it's not crazy expensive. And in case you're wondering, this is what the H braces or corner posts look like. It's actually, if you're doing a corner, it's just two of their H braces that you put together to do it. And much like the timeless fence posts themselves, these things come pre-drilled. And so when you're coming to a corner post, you can just run your wire right through it. And then you don't even have to use any sort of insulators. I am going to insulate though this cabling that sits here just in case, so I don't want anything like this happening to ground out the fence. You know, as frustrating as this project was, I'm very proud of the final output of this fence. It's not perfect. There's parts that are slightly not level. I essentially learned on the fly how to do certain functions, like how to crimp and clamp a cable, or how to use these little ratcheting tensioner dealies here. And so for example, the first tensioner I installed is not nearly as pretty as the 20th tensioner that I installed. And so that's just the value that you get by learning and doing. And the lessons I received in learning how to build a high tensile fence and being able to have this scale and now have it be something I'm not intimidated by and I can easily do myself, I think is really important because it's a core activity that I need to be doing all the time as a farmer. But even more important than that skill, the ability to not get frustrated and not give up and persevere, that's arguably been my biggest takeaway with this entire project. Do you see this fence post right here in the middle? This cockeyed looking one right here. This right here is my most crookedest fence post, but it's actually maybe the most important fence post in this entire 150 post installation. You see, this fence post was my breaking point. I was desperately trying to get it in last summer and I couldn't quite get it in. And pretty much all around here below it is solid rock. So it's hard to find a good spot to get it in here. And it took me three tries to drive it in. And then when I finally did drive it in, I noticed how painfully cockeyed and crooked it ended up looking. And it was after putting in that fence post that I just pretty much gave up on this entire project last year and I stopped. That fence post was quite literally my breaking point. But I also think it's an important marker of my failure and what I did. And then when I come to look at this fence post, which is pretty much perfectly installed straight and level, that was the first fence post I put in this spring when I restarted the project. And I feel like the space that exists between this fence post and this fence post right here, while it's, I don't know, about 16 feet of wire, it also actually represents a lot of personal growth for me because it's a very clear reminder for me the importance to sticking with it, not giving up, not getting frustrated because you're not good at something 
but powering through and making it happen. And yes, I just noticed as I was editing this video that that is in fact a tick crawling on my face. And so rather than pull that fence post out and reinstall it properly, I decided to leave it in as a gentle reminder of that important truth. And so for decades to come, as I walk past that fence post, I will always, always, always remember that lesson. And so yes, the crooked fence post stays in place for that reason, or maybe just because I'm a little bit lazy too. Take your pick on how you want to think about it. Now today I've got to install some grounding rods and that's on my to-do list, but very soon, I'm gonna be taking those cattle that you see down at the bottom of the hill and driving them up this hill and bringing them up to the brand new pasture fence. And I am super, super excited about that fact. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button. You know you wanna, come on.